speaking a lot about Cadbury's today. It's unanimously rejected Kraft's offer of £7.24 pence per share. And Steve today has been speaking with the CFO. Hello, Ross. Hello, everybody. We've been speaking exclusively to Andrew Bonfield, who is the CFO of Cabri. Also, took a, a very quick word with Todd Stitzer as well, who's the chief executive. Those two gentlemen, along with their chairman, Roger Carr, have been robustly defending what they call derisory, what they call uh, inadequate in terms of that uh, craft bid, which, as we all remember, came out on September the 7th. It's worth £3 uh, of cash per Cabri share, plus 0.2589 new craft shares per Cabri share. And as Ross said, it is currently worth around about £7.24 per share. The market obviously believes that isn't enough because the Cadbury shares are currently trading at exactly £7.92 per share. But what you can see is that the shares in this company uh, before the bid date in September were trading at a mean £5.50, between £5 and £5.75. But the company believes with their new growth prospects in their, their vision strategy, which they outlined again today with enhanced targets going forward to 2013. Uh, they believe this is a bid which significantly undervalues the company. We spoke to Andrew Bonfield, uh, and this is what he had to say about Kraft and why it wasn't right for Cadbury. I mean, the bid is not right. Effectively, it, it's a derisory bid, significantly undervalues the company. Uh, it's an EBITDA multiple of around 11.6 times. Uh, versus uh, sector multiples, which have been at 14 times plus for deals in the, uh, historically. So this really does undervalue the company and the growth potential that we have. So we believe that the shareholders should reject the bid and focus on Cadbury as an independent company going forward. The bid is currently worth around about 725 pence per share, around about 16 billion US dollars. What price do they need to show to get you to the table? Hello, Ross. Hello, everybody. We've been speaking exclusively to Andrew Bonfield, who is the CFO of Cadbury. Also took a, a very quick word with Todd Stitzer as well, who's the chief executive. Those two gentlemen, along with their chairman, Roger Carr, have been robustly defending what they call derisory, what they call uh, inadequate in terms of that uh, craft bid, which, as we all remember, came out on September the 7th. It's worth £3 uh, of cash per Cadbury share, plus 0.2589 new craft craft shares per Cadbury share and as Ross said it is currently worth around about £7.24 pence per share. The market obviously believes that isn't enough because the Cadbury shares are currently trading at exactly £7.92 pence per share but what you can see is that the shares in this company uh, before the bid date in September were trading at a mean £5.50 between £5 and £5.75 but the company believes with their new growth prospects in their, their vision strategy, which they outlined again today with enhanced targets going forward to 2013. Uh, they believe this is a bid which significantly undervalues the company. We spoke to Andrew Bonfield, uh, and this is what he had to say about Kraft and why it wasn't right for Cadbury. I mean, the bid is not right. Effectively, it's a derisory bid, significantly undervalues the company. Uh, it's an EBITDA multiple of around 11.6 times. Uh, versus uh, sector multiples, which have been at 14 times plus for deals in the, uh, historically. So this really does undervalue the company and the growth potential that we have. So we believe that the shareholders should reject the bid and focus on Cadbury as an independent company going forward. The bid is currently worth around about 725 pence per share, around about 16 billion US dollars. What price do they need to show to get you to the table? Well, we can't talk about price as a result of the takeover panel rules, but I would highlight the fact that the EBITDA multiple that they're offering based on 2009 EBITDA is actually around 11.6 times. And again, just to reiterate, deals in this sector have been done over 14 times historically. Todd Stitzer, Roger Carr and yourself are saying the bid substantially undervalues Cadbury. But what price is Cadbury worth then? I'm not going to comment on what value would be that uh, the board would consider, as, uh, but the board would obviously have to take into account their duties and responsibilities, and they're very aware of those as part of this bid process. There is an understanding that you have the backing of a large amount of Cadbury shareholders at the moment, but at what price would they like you to get into negotiations with Kraft? Uh, obviously, we are in contact daily with our shareholder base, and obviously today is a big day for us as well because uh, we'll be talking to us post this. We'll be going on roadshows, uh, meeting with them. Uh, we have a good idea where our shareholder base is. Unfortunately, I'm not going to tell you about that. You make a lot of comment in the defence document about being independent. How important is independence? I mean, would you consider giving that up if you were the predator rather than the prey? Well, 
look at the company. The company is the second largest uh, confectionery company pure, and is the only pure play listed confectionery company in the market today. We are a unique asset and a unique investment. We have great growth potential, growing our top line going forward between 5 and 7 percent per annum, growing our margins to 16 to 18 percent, and generating significant operating cash flow, uh, ca operating cash conversion ratio between 80 and 90 percent going forward and also growing dividends by double-digit rates going forward. This is a great company, it's a great attractive investment, and we believe deserves to be independent. You talked a lot about independence. Is that more important than price? At the end of the day, everything has a value, and we have to look at that value as part of the equation. Uh, but the company and the board are very focused on what the value, and they understand what the value of the company is, and are aware of that, and would obviously take that into account in any situation that did arise. Have you been talking, though, to potential white knights uh, in preference to accepting a bid from Kraft? We have had a number of approaches from third parties. Uh, the board is fully aware of their responsibilities, but have decided at this point in time not to allow us to communicate about that, and we will obviously, until such time as disclosure is appropriate in that situation. Are you talking to Hershey? Uh, all I can say to you is that we are, as the board has said, we are, cannot comment on individual cases. We are obviously looking at uh, making sure that we do the appropriate actions for shareholders, and that's our focus. So despite you saying that independence is one of the most important factors, would you sacrifice that to find another deal as an alternative to craft? Well, I think our focus is principally on independence. That is the primary focus we have. Obviously, if somebody puts a significant amount of value on the table, uh, we would obviously have to consider that, and the board is fully aware of its responsibilities in that regard. Andrew, do you believe that Kraft can afford Cadbury? I think it's going to be a stretch for them to go from where they are today uh, to what we believe is full and fair price for Cadbury. Um, I think, uh, you know, but it's over to them. They have to make that uh, transition and leap. How important is growth in emerging markets for your defence? Oh, they're significant. Uh, in fact, we've been growing our emerging market businesses between uh, around 14% uh, per annum over the past several years. Uh, Plan don't necessarily want craft that's shares that's as well. So that's my point. Absolutely. Um, and I, what I love is that if you look at his eyes, every time you ask him about Hershey or Nestle, they sort of behind the glaze, they sort of lit up just a little Two bit. Two points. Who are you talking to and yeah. what price will you sell out to? And I'm afraid yeah. that is what the market wants to know. I could have asked him all about more organic growth stories elsewhere, yeah. but I think uh, those are the questions we want. And of course, he was never going to answer what price, but no, uh, hopefully but, we but moved the leg on this story today. you see a little today. light in his eyes, though. <laughs> I, I, that's well, it was after the fifth see. time that I talked about price that perhaps <laughs> that little light appeared. Maybe it was desperation. <laughs> Steve, good stuff. Thanks very yeah. much indeed for that. That was Andrew Bonfield, the CFO of Cadbury, talking to Steve Sedgwick. That's it for today's edition of Strictly Money. Our thanks once again uh, to Roger Nightingale. The US Sport Box is underway in the...